Everyone knows professional animation takes time, dedication, and an incredibly complex rig. But what if I told you that was a lie? It doesn't take a lot of time, you don't need a rig, and you can do it for free. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you three completely different setups that will allow you to animate anything in seconds. So grab the latest copy of Blender and let's get started. The first way you can animate without a rig is by using shape keys. But you might be wondering, is this even possible? How do I make more than one key without it looking weird? That's where absolute shape keys come in. Absolute shape keys allow you to create keys that are non-additive. That means they won't cause weird deformations to your mesh. There are also a ton of options when it comes to adding shape keys, such as the ability to mirror your mesh, as well as using the new shape key from mix option which allows you to create a brand new key from a previous key, making post-to-post -post animation a breeze. Now you can edit your mesh in any way you want. Scale, translate, rotate, just make sure you're in edit mode when you're doing it. You can also take a look at the different proportional editing tools within Blender itself by clicking this button or pressing O on your keyboard. Depending on your own PC, you might want to opt for a lower resolution mesh when using shape keys. And you can always use a subsurf modifier to smooth things out later on. You also want to bear in mind since all these changes are happening in edit mode, you won't be able to track any arcs. However, there is a simple way around this. Select one vertex, press shift and S and choose cursor to selected. Now create an empty and with the empty selected, shift click back onto the mesh, enter back into edit mode by pressing tab and press P on the keyboard to create a vertex parent. You now create a motion path on that empty object and track the arcs of your animation. Now the second way you can create rigless animation is by using modifiers, specifically the hook modifier. Now I can hear you asking, what does this even do? But if we select our mesh and apply the hook modifier, we can see that no. what it actually does is act as a parent to any vertices that are affected, essentially acting as a vertex parent. So to start, place a few empty objects around your character in areas that you want them to deform, such as the knees, wrists, head, you get the idea. It's also good to name these empty so you don't get confused later on. Next, you want to go into edit mode and select all the vertices that are closest to those empties. You don't need to select all of them, just a few that are in the area. If the character is supposed to be stationary, you might want to select that area where it's supposed to be fixed to the ground, wall, ceiling, or wherever your character is supposed to be. After you've selected all these vertices, you want to assign them to a vertex group, name it Influence. Now you want to make a hook modifier for all of the empties that you've just made and select the empties as the object. It's a good idea to rename the modifiers as well, just so you're not confused. After that, you can select the influence vertex group for each modifier. However, you might notice it's not really working as expected. That's because you need to select the different vertices from the vertex group that are going to be affected by that empty. To fix this, keep the modifier panel still open and tab into edit mode. Select the affected vertices for each modifier and press Assign. You should now end up with each empty controlling that specific part of the mesh. And the last part is where it all comes together. So select the mesh and apply a Laplacian deform. For the anchor weights, select the vertex group and press Bind. And that's it! The repeat slider will smooth out the mesh deform and you can always go back into the vertex groups and edit it as you wish. It's now time for the final instalment, the one you've all been waiting for geometry nodes. First off, you need to create a set position node and a position node. Create two more nodes, that being a separate XYZ and a combined XYZ. Connect the position to the vector input of the separate XYZ node and connect the X output to the Y input. In between these two, you want to create a math node, set it to sign. Plug the combined XYZ vector into the offset position node and you should see your mesh deform. To control this sine wave, add a math node, set it to multiply, and put it between the separate XYZ and the sine node. This value controls the wavelength. To control the speed, you just need to create a scene time node and a math node. Put the math node in between the separate XYZ and the multiply node. Hook up the scene time to the second input, and boom, you've got movement. If you want to adjust this even further, you can insert a multiply math node here, which you can use to speed up or slow down your animation. And this is a very basic setup that you can use to animate fish, worms, snakes, anything that wriggles really. And you can also add a cosine node to create this spirally effect. 
honestly the possibilities are absolutely endless and that wraps up this video let me know in the comments which of these three techniques you're going to use next and make sure you subscribe to learn about more ways you can animate in blender and while you're here you might want to take a look at this 